and welcome back to another episode of Loud and Opinionated. I am your host, Jake Williams. Now, I wasn't planning on putting this out and having another episode before the end of 2018, but I, I had to talk about it because this past weekend, I've, I've been a very upset with how things are going, and, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Beforehand, um, I want to give a special thank you to anybody that supported the show or listened to the show in the in the six months existence of this show. Uh, it means a lot. We've gone through changes, and we're making a lot of different moves in 2019. I've been talking about that for months, about how 2019 is going to be a big year for us, and I, and I really do think that's true. And I'm actually very, very excited for 2019. And so this is just a quick thank you to everybody. Uh, Derek did show me the beta of the new website that is going to be launched in 2019. That's very exciting. Been talking with the guys from the new show that we're working on. And, uh, yeah, I've uh, mapped out a schedule for Jake's rad movie show, and I can't wait to share that with you. It's going to be a fun year. Can't wait. And uh, I'm not going to waste any more time on that. Let's talk about the situation at hand. We have to talk about it. Because I, I, I hyped up these games and hyped up the whole process so much, I feel like I have no other choice than to talk about the sheer and utter madness that was the college football playoff for last Saturday. And at this point, based on what I saw in both those games, I think we should have just stuck with the BCS format because clearly the two best teams are Alabama and Clemson. There can be an argument made for Georgia, sure, but Georgia had to win. They they had a play-in game. They lost. They lost their opportunity. It's just That's just the way it is. I'm sorry. And we've got a serious problem in hand because this is the fourth time these two teams will play each other, the third time for a national championship. This Since the existence of the playoff, Alabama's been in it since the beginning. And other than one time, they've advanced to the final. Thank you, Ohio State, that one magical year. The first year, I'll be honest, the first year of the college football playoff was the best year because you had a lot of variety, you had a lot of drama, and at the end of the day, two teams got in that you didn't think would happen. Probably everybody thought Alabama was going to go straight there and play Florida State and, and probably crush them as we saw Florida State Finally, all the the luck had run out with Oregon. So that was actually the best time to watch it. And I'm not taking away from the two national championships, back-to-back years that we saw with Alabama and Clemson. Those are both great. Those are fun games. But it's this is the problem we run into. It's, gonna, it's the Cavs-Warriors situation. Eventually, people are going to get tired of seeing this over and over and over again. And people are going to say, well, what's the point? Other than SEC fans and Clemson fans and Alabama fans, nobody else is going to care. Nobody else is going to watch it. You're going to, and if you're the, you know, these bowl games, the, the college football playoff, you're losing money. And, and that's when you should start caring because they really don't care about the competition on the field. They only care about what's going to be filling up their wallets. And I can already tell you I'll watch the game because – I, I love the sport, and I want to know how it ends. And if there's ever an, a chance, and I think Clemson has a legitimate shot, if there's ever a shot for Nick Saban to lose a football game, I'm going to watch it. But it's getting harder and harder to give a crap about these games. I mean, let's just go back and think about Saturday. Let's look at this matchup. And, look, I don't like Notre Dame. I think Notre Dame is always been overrated. I say, I've said that for years. For me, there's like a hierarchy. There's there's Notre Dame, there's Michigan, there's Texas. Those three schools to me always seem hyped up too much, overrated. You could also also throw Ohio State in this year. Other years, I felt, I believe the hype this year was not one of them. And also a quick thing to address here. Anybody that was an Ohio State fan that truly thought that Ohio State should be in the, in the, in the final four here, you're an idiot because... Look how bad Auburn beat Purdue. It was 63 to 14. It wasn't a competition. It was 49 to 7 at halftime. All right, so there was no competition there. Purdue beat Ohio State by four touchdowns. Ohio State had no reason to be there. And then Georgia fans, 
you have a legitimate case, but at the end of the day, you lost a play-in game. And you can't justify them getting in the Final Four and just saying that the SEC championship game didn't matter. It didn't exist. Because where everybody else has to play those championship games and get in, you can't just award losing. I hate that argument. That we 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 got to get that out of this sport. That's That's probably the biggest issue we have at hand. We put a ton of value on winning. We put all this value on going undefeated and winning your conference, and it's a big deal, and it should be. But we spend way too much time trying to justify losing. How many other sports do they sit down and say, well, they lost at this time, they lost to this team in this particular situation, well, it was snowing out, and they lost this game by only three points, and, you know, this, that, and the other thing. we ju- we got to stop justifying losses that way. And I'm guilty of it because I'm trying to work within the system that was put before us. But we've got to admit it now at five years, we've kind of got to learn something here that it's not going to work anymore. It's not. And I've always been someone that's pushed for eight. And I've always said that, and I think that's the best way to go. There's some arguments for 10. There's some arguments for 12. If if uh, FCS schools can figure it out, and they've been doing this for a very long time, their playoff system, if they can figure that out, how is it going to be figured out here in FCS in the, in where the big boys play? You know? I look at it this way. How, what sport, and I got this from uh, Christian on Twitter. Thanks, Christian. What sport ever says, you know what, four teams, that's how we're going to decide a championship? No sport says that. The NFL has 12 NBA, NHL, both conference has 16 teams to figure it out. And you have to win 16 games in both those leagues to win a championship. But that, what, what, in whose mind did they say, you know what, we've got to go with four. That's the only thing that matters. And this is the worst part about it. Okay, so we have four teams, four slots, but we have five power conferences. We have five major conferences, but we only have four spots. So every year, one of them gets left out. And in this year's case, two of them get left out, and you put an in in, in, in uh, I can't talk, and then you throw in Notre Dame, and you leave out the Pac-12 and the Big Ten. Granted, both conferences, didn't. I don't think, played well enough to have a team there. But this is the issue. It's, it's, and there's no, when you take out the variety in the sport, you take out the fun in the sport. You've already degraded bowl games as it is. You have a ton of players, a ton of these guys not playing Maybe that wasn't the intention. Maybe that's not the plan, but that's just the situation it is. And you can't, I don't fault the players because they got to make money. They, they, they've got their, they have to make their investments, whatever, you know, teams are going to want to see that they have enough film on the guys, but it elimit it almost completely eliminates mid tier teams. It eliminates anybody with a fighting chance. Look, Notre Dame isn't a bad football team. I think they're a relatively good football team, but that's that's the gap. There's a huge talent gap, and that gets exposed when you only have four teams because look at how bad Clemson beat them. Clemson manhandled them. I mean, it was competitive in one quarter. One quarter, maybe a little bit of the second quarter, maybe a quarter and a half, it was competitive. And part of that's coaching. Yes, I think Brian Kelly makes some real dumb decisions and wasn't doing enough to put his team in, in, in the right spot to win the game. But it, there's, so, there's so many factors here at hand, and one of them is there's a huge talent gap from Alabama and Clemson and Georgia, and then there's everybody else. And what part of that is fun? What is, how is that fun to watch for a sport other than being a fan of those teams and being the SEC blowhard that only seem to show up when it's bowl season, when they can brag about it? Good. Your team, your conference had a good bowl season. I and everybody's guilty of it. I said it about uh, the Big Ten last year when they went seven and one in bowl games. I get it, but it 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 hurts the sport. It really does. And this to me is more of a sign that we need eight. This is the sign that we have to move forward in a, in a plan. And I don't care how you set up the brackets, but it's got to be done. I would say if you really want to go twelve. I mean, that might be a stretch, but look, don't tell me it's about school either. And we'll get to that in a minute. But if you want to stretch it out and, and do it this way and make it eight, I think that's the way you got to go. 
Otherwise, you're going to end up with Alabama versus Clemson 17 in the year 2035. We're just, it's going to be the same thing over and over again. And if you're okay with all that recycled nonsense, that's good for you, man. I'm glad you had some enjoyment. But for everybody else, we want to see teams get a shot and we want to see more variety. And I also want to point out, I love the UCF. I love the whole mentality they have. I, 25 straight wins is impressive. But man, oh man, from what I have saw from Clemson and Alabama, they, it, they, if they got on the field, I think they would be like legitimate health concerns because they would get ran over and trucked. It would not look pretty for anybody involved. So I, I just want to point that out. Good for you, I guess. But so we have this we have this system that only truly cares about four teams. All these other bowl, bowl games are just appetizers or side salads. That's all they are. And that's I know that it's been like that for a while, but at least with the BCS era there was some value to those games. The Rose Bowl was still a valuable game if it wasn't a championship. Orange Bowl, Sugar Bowl, uh Fiesta Bowl those all, all those games still had a lot of value, and a lot of teams cared about those games, and it was a big deal. And you had teams like UCF who won the Fiesta Bowl in, uh, 2013, in the 2013 season. Like That was their championship. That was a big deal to them. And you just don't have that anymore. Yes, the New Year's Six, I've said it several times, I love the New Year's Six. I love the setup. But now it seems more than ever that, it, that, those, that the whole gimmick doesn't really matter. And I think that 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 that's gonna sh- that shines through. And now there could be an argument that maybe the, there's still it just depends on the team. Sure, I mean Michigan did not get up for that Peach Bowl and care. And I think that's all coaching. That's absolutely all coaching. I think like a team like Florida really had value in it. But I don't know. It seems like the postseason has to get there there needs to be more focus and I think maybe it might be the end of the bowl era because you're seeing teams not have they don't really care and you're seeing guys leave and it's just that's the end of the day and I I don't know I mean the Alamo Bowl is a good example that was a bowl game that's always been kind of one of those mid-tier bowl games it was a lot of fun to watch it was a very competitive game that is one of the few competitive bowl games we've had all year all of the other ones have been decided by a couple touchdowns. Some of them didn't even play, got canceled, which that's a whole other debacle altogether. But maybe we are at a point where bowl games lose their value and we move more towards a playoff system. I think bowl games always will have a purpose, and they should, because you need. I feel like it's unfair for teams that go 7-5 and five and 8-4 and 9-3, and three, whatever, for them not to have a bowl game and have a postseason and get, you know, play one more time as seniors. I think that still needs to exist and those situations still need to have a value, but the, the, the grander scheme of like the Rose bowl and the orange bowl and things like those kind of bowl games, they might not, they just probably don't even need to exist anymore and take that new, take the new year six and make it what it is. It's, it's a new year six of these are six teams playing on New Year's Day. These are six teams vying for a national championship. And you can play at those neutral sites. And, hell, if you really want to call it those bowl game names, you can. But they don't serve a purpose. I mean, they didn't serve a purpose when, uh, you know, we had them for now. I mean, who really thought, oh, it's the Orange Bowl in Nebraska, between Nebraska. It's the Orange Bowl between Alabama, I wish, between Alabama and Oklahoma. Nobody ever said, oh, man, that Orange Bowl game was nuts. It was always, oh, that semifinal game. See what I'm getting at? I'm, I'm saying keep this idea of a New Year's Six, but move more towards having eliminating those bowl games. And have those. I mean, they already have done it so, like, with tomorrow, New Year's Day, with what they're doing with that. I mean, do those games really have value? They're not playoff games. Do they really matter? For some schools, they say yes. But for the grand scheme of things, probably not. I feel like that's the only way to write the course of 
not having Alabama Georgia every year. And you can argue, well, teams need to get better. That's just the thing. Is, is it's a sport. It's all about the best player plays, and it's a meritocracy. That's what we. That's what sports are all about. Yes, that's true. But it's really hard to get to players to come to a school and say, "Hey, we can win championships." When it's when in reality they don't have a damn chance because it's either Clemson or Alabama, and maybe Georgia will get in, but Georgia will have two touchdown lead and blow it. It's harder to recruit players to come to a school when all Nick Saban has to do is if he really wanted to. I mean, if he really cared, he'd show up. But let's be honest, he's got such a big staff. He's got so many other guys. They'll do it for him. But all he would have to do, show up, drop, what, the six rings that he has? Just drop them on a table and say, that's what I have. That's what you'll get. It's really not. He doesn't even have to try. So, you know, we have these things with satellite camps and we have all these different ways to to be more competitive. But I think the ultimate thing is to create a system to be competitive. And over the years, there's been a lot of pullbacks on scholarships and certain teams get so many scholarships to try and eliminate that. But we also have a system that's going to constantly reward Alabama and Clemson. And it's not their fault. It's not the fault of the team. It, it'll never be the fault of, it, of a g- of great coaching and great players that they have. It's the fault of the, the system. And the idea that, that a team like Notre Dame, who doesn't have to play a conference game, only plays 12 games, doesn't have that extra 13th game to work through and, and, and hopefully not gets people hurt and play their, and get to that level. Every other team... That it was in the playoff. The three other teams had to do that. I mean, Oklahoma had to beat Texas and play well to even be considered of getting in. And in a system of eight, play, eight teams, Notre Dame would be in there, but you would have a Georgia. You might have an Ohio State. Maybe even UCF, as, as bloody as that game would be, you would have a team like that. I mean, there was, there's, there was no point of having a playoff this year. It was a waste of time and money. The talent gap is that wide, and Oklahoma is a very good football team. Notre Dame, pretty damn good football team. That's how much better Clemson and Alabama are. So if you have an 18 playoff, say with 18 would be great. That's what I thought I said. An 18 team playoff if you had that that setup it would be say take your power five so if you look at all the power five champions of this season here's what you would have you'd have alabama you'd have clemson you'd have washington you'd have oklahoma you would have ohio state that's five now you'd say you fill in three wild card spots ucf georgia notre dame now imagine what that landscape would look like. So say, just just based on seeding, let's just say that we go with the rankings of the five, the top five. Uh, so Alabama would most likely be playing UCF. Clemson would play probably. I would say Washington would be the seventh seed. Yeah, I would go with that. And then you have who who would be the third seed conference champion? I would say Oklahoma. So they would be playing Georgia again, which we saw how much fun that was in the playoff in the Rose Bowl last year. And then you'd have, you know, four versus five, which would probably be Washington versus Notre Dame. I think that's a very exciting playoff. Would we probably have the same ending? With Clemson and Alabama, maybe, but at least it has some suspense. And no part watching the Cotton Bowl that I think Notre Dame was going to beat Clemson. I would love to see it because I love variety and I, I absolutely hate Notre Dame. But the minute they reversed the call on the fumble, which I think was probably the right call, the minute they reversed that fumble, 
that was when I knew that Clemson uh, was going to win the game and Notre Dame had no chance because that would have been the big momentum shift. They just got a field goal. They could have scored a touchdown. They had a chance. But again, Brian Kelly's or whoever his offensive coordinator, I'm not going to take the time to look it up, but Brian Kelly's staff did not prepare well. I remember there was a you know questionable call whether he caught the ball or not, and it was an incompletion. The next play, a third and ten, they run a halfback draw out of the shotgun. This and also this this Clemson defensive line had just been mauling the Notre Dame offensive line. So the grand scheme of that was to run a draw, and at the time it was only a nine to three game. And the you know, little tiny moments in that game that when I said there's no chance in hell. And then Alabama coming out and just annihilating Oklahoma in the first quarter, 21 to nothing, the first quarter, and then immediately after that going up 28. Good on Oklahoma for trying to make a game out of it. But there would have been more value. And look, I'm not discrediting that Alabama would have just demolished UCF that would have happened but that's just one game out of the, all the playoffs that for sure you knew there was going to be a winner you know what I'm saying they're at, there's, there's more to an 8 team system and it doesn't have to be the power 5 champions and 3 wild card bids it could be something different it could be the best 8 teams the top 8 ranked teams will play each other I think you'd have to make some exceptions like the BCS did where one conference can't have three teams in, in, this, in the BCS Bulls. You know, I think you could play that up a little bit. But then again, we're trying to find the best teams here. So if it happens to be three teams from the SEC, so be it. Three teams of the Big Ten, so you know, it, you, you'd have to work that out. And that, that's just what happens, you know? And uh, I think that's the right way to go. I think... After five years, we've learned our lesson. When Alabama and Clemson play each other four times in the five years of the system, three of them for a national championship, it's going to lose viewership. It's going to lose engagements. And I think the wheels are already in motion, I think, for the committee to say, hey, look, we have to set up a a legitimate system. And... We've got to we've got to get rid of perception in the sport. Too much of this sport is all about what I said earlier, awarding losses, awarding uncertainty. There's 130 teams and you're trying to narrow it down to 4. And by doing that, you constantly have to say, well, Let's get in. Let's dig in deep, guys. Let's roll up our sleeves and play with semantics here. Let's say, okay, so they lost in November of of the season by three points, and there was a little bit of rain, and uh, I don't know, somebody had a mild cough, and uh, that might have messed up the game. You know, these little stupid little tiny things we have to delve into instead of doing what the NFL does or what any other league sports league does where it says okay here's the requirements we have to have four four we have four divisions division champions are in and then based on record and based on tiebreakers this team gets in there's no well you know the here's the thing we wanted to give the wild card spot to the eagles but they're playing Nick Foles at the end there. That's a lot more effort than, say, the Giants. And not really the Giants this season. I'm just using them for an example. And here's the thing about the Giants. I don't know if Eli should do it, and I don't think he could do it. So you know what? We're going to take the Eagles over the Giants. That's the line of thinking that goes into this system. And we're just going to sit here and say that's Okay. At least with the BCS, we had technology to blame it on. Be like, well, these computers and their algorithms picked this. At least it was <laughs> something to blame it on. I don't know. So tell me what you think. Do you think that the that college football needs to go to eight teams and that would be the best solution for the sport? Or do you think, hey, four is fine, uh, you know, roll tide? Because <laughs> that's 
you know, all in, whatever the t- Tigers fans say, because that's to me the only other option. Or do we need twelve? Do we need ten? What What's the proper solution on fixing the college football playoff? I want to know. Let me know, guys. It's important. The future of the sport is at hand. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, It's been a great 2018. 2019 is only going to be better. Believe me, especially because we have, you know, fans like you guys in in the community like uh, this. It's great. And, uh, yeah, you can follow us on social media at Loud Opinionated on Twitter, Loud Opinionated on Facebook, and at Loud Opinionated Pod. Loud and Opinionated Pod on Instagram and uh, yeah thank you so much once again and uh, be loud and be proud